mind-blowing moments on paternity court. You've only had sex with Ms. Salvo one time? No, Your Honor. You were naked in her kitchen and she said, why? Yes, ma'am. It was a year ago? Oh, it was not. Yeah, you were. As soon as that baby came out my stomach, I looked at Fred and the first thing out my mouth was, is he yours? And I'm still struggling. I'm homeless. I'm trying to get my children. A confused 26-year-old woman appeared in court to dismantle the paternity frauds laid by her mother. She was told her mama's ex-Mr. Long was her real, but now she wanted some DNA proof, while the mommy stood firm with her claim. Let's see how things go in this one. Ms. Robinson, you're back in court today because you say your mother, Ms. Harms, has continued to commit paternity fraud. She's now claiming her ex-boyfriend, Mr. Long, is your biological father. Miss Robinson started the testimony by saying that she never got a straight answer about her father's identity. It had been a mix of two or three guys, however. The defendant refused to be painted as a villain. Miss Harms, you say you told her from the beginning. Yes, yes, Who her father is. Yes, you. Your and Honor. who is that person? Mr. Mr. Long, Your Honor. The plaintiff was told to express her feelings, and she said all her life she felt like there was a missing piece. But she promised herself that her kids wouldn't go through the same thing and taunted Miss Harms for being promiscuous. Hearing this, the big mama couldn't stop herself from arguing. I'm going to get like that. Well, I you didn't be say talking you were easy, my but you let people talk. You Don't act like you weren't out person. there doing wrong yourself. It would have been times where I wouldn't have went in my room and said, I hate my mom. I wish she wasn't here. I can't stand her. If I had a father to run to. Miss Robinson continued that she was a famous athlete in her student era. She was a big deal, but at home still, she was alone and depressed. Oh, it sounds like a celebrity story, but all the pain is real. Then the judge asked the defendant to respond to her feelings. The fact that she said there are lies. What, what, what lies is she telling? If I didn't raise her, she wouldn't have or be who she is today. <laughs> Pretty much everything you have, I've given because you. they took care of themselves. Pretty okay. much everything she has, I've given her. The mother-daughter duo was already broken, so the judge asked about their relationship, and the defendant said the plaintiff didn't let her meet the grandkids, which led to another brawl. As Big Mama said she told her about Mr. Long, and he lived near them. But the poor girl asserted how a 10-year-old would do it all by herself, and the judge turned to Miss Harms for the answer. You always knew who your dad was. Where was I gonna go we at 10 Georgia, years old? Miss Robinson, do you remember you know going to visit Mr. Long? Never. Mr. Long, do you remember Miss <laughs> Harms bringing Miss Robinson to see you and saying this God, is your dad. father? No, man. Well, he straight away denied her claim. How much of an old brain you got, man? But then, Mr. Long said he believed about possible paternity because he had got a picture of the plaintiff from Miss Harms, and the defendant cut him off and cried that she had sent nine pictures of the baby, so the judge let him continue his testimony. She sent me a picture when she was first born. She said I was the father, but I had doubt because, you know, she was supposedly sleeping with someone else in my family. Supposedly now. So and then some more guys in the neighborhood. The judge turned to Miss Harms to reveal more, and she called him a double-faced liar for not owing up their meetups at his house. Then Mr. Long replied to the judge that he knew about the pregnancy, but he lost contact with her. I kept it like that because my dad was like, Yes, ma'am. Because you didn't want to tell your oh my god. You didn't want to tell your the parents. Told me I told my mother. Dad, I kept it from my dad. Not you didn't all. tell your dad yes, you told girl. your mother. This poor woman's broken feelings got more strained because there weren't any strong clues from the alleged father, and she needed answers about her paternity today at all costs. So the judge moved forward to read the results. It has been mm. determined by this court. Mr. Long, you are her father. <sighs> I told you, I'm sorry. Okay, I told you, I love you so much. A father brought his case looking for his long lost daughter and hoped to finally be in her life. But the court found the alleged woman that could be his lost baby. Miss Bond, on the other hand, didn't believe he was her daddy, but today's DNA results will put a stop to Mr. Jenkins' search. You believe that you have a long lost daughter and hoped to one day find her to prove you are her father, is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. But she does not believe you are her father. The defendant replied that she never heard of Mr. Jenkins in all her life, and none of the family members ever mentioned him, and he wasn't on the birth certificate. Okay, it started very rough here. Further, she explained her denial in court. You don't believe he's your father? No, Your Honor. Because you've never heard of him? Never heard of him. No one has ever spoken of him. I've never seen any pictures. My mother never even spoke of him, brought him up in no conversations whatsoever. After Miss Bond's testimony, the defendant explained that he had been on his search for 24 years and revealed that her mother was sexy as hell and they were very happy with each other and talked about her pregnancy time. When you found out she was pregnant, I was excited. You know, I was I was just blown away. I was I was I was, I was on so, top of the world. 
if you guys were so close and, and you were so in love and everything, why did it take you so long to find me? Judge asked defendant about her bringing up and replied that her maternal relative raised her and the plaintiff admitted he knew someone was there for the baby. Things went smoothly till the judge asked about the poor girl's experiences being an orphan and she broke down all her traumas and loneliness. I felt alone. You know, I didn't have anyone to talk to. I didn't have anyone. I lost my mother and my father, and I didn't have anybody, and I struggle, and I'm still struggling. I'm homeless, I'm trying to get my children, and I have no one on my side, and I just feel so alone. The plaintiff said he tried to meet her, but every time doors were slammed at him, and he showed the numbers he left for contact, but still no one helped him. Miss Bond said she never heard anything from him. He seems truthful by the pain in his words. Turning her against me, the more I was trying to do things, we was both going to school. I'm sorry, it's I still don't believe that's the reason to break up with someone, letting outside people get into your relationship. If you really loved her, you would have stayed, regardless of whatever was going on. The judge asked him about the childbirth incident, and he said that he visited the baby later with his mother after two weeks. Then the defendant was asked about the birth picture, and she denied seeing it. I was just excited, and then uh, I said, you well, where are you? You should have saw me regardless of whether or not she was in another relationship. You shouldn't have let anything get in between you being with her or you seeing me, being around me, raising me. The judge had taken all the possible answers from both of them. Every argument of the plaintiff was a missing piece of the puzzle, but it was time to reveal the truth to the innocent girl and the stressed father with the DNA results. Mr. Jenkins, you are her father. 24 years of doing footwork, it had paid off. Yes, sir. Thank it did. you, God. I love you. 18 years of stress and pain brought this man to court to prove his ex the paternity of his young boy, Mr. McDonald, while Miss Gooley not only denied it, but also admitted that she cheated on him during their relationship. The worst part of this story is that they both lost custody of their boy when he was just one year old. Mr. Brooks, you summoned your ex-girlfriend, Miss Gooley, to paternity court to prove that you are the father of her 18-year-old son, Mr. McDonald. Yes, Your Honor. Ms. Gooley, you admit you cheated on Mr. Brooks all those years ago and are here today to prove to Mr. Brooks that he is not the father of your son. Yes, Your Honor. The plaintiff started the testimony. He thoroughly shared all the moments he experienced on the baby's birth and was sure he was the father because he was present there all the time. Then the judge asked Ms. Gooley about their relationship. How long was that relationship? Ten years. Was it a committed relationship? No, Your Honor. During the pregnancy, did you ever tell Mr. Brooks that he may not be no, the biological father? No, Your Honor, I didn't. The defendant continued talking about the other man and said she believed that he was the real father and also admitted that she wasn't faithful to Mr. Brooks at that time. The judge asked Daddy about the possible doubts, but he denied saying this. It was one of the great, greatest days of my life when she told me she was pregnant. These are pictures you've carried for 17 years, yes. believing that you are Mr. McDonald's biological father. Following their drug story, the plaintiff quickly blamed her, but the judge commented that still one of them should have been there for the kid. Yeah, she is right. Where was the other parent? Upon this, defendant jumped up and said, the Okay, well, why is he not the legitimized? Round. The day they came and got here, this is the day I took the picture. This is the last day. So this is a picture of the exact day your son was taken from yep, you. January 23rd. Then the judge asked him of the moments when he last saw his baby, and he said that two officers grabbed him away from the kid but didn't arrest him. Then the judge turned to the defendant and asked her about the time of revealing the other possibility, and she said this. He claims someone else's daughter. That's not his child. But you know what? Truth be told, after 10 years of us being together and not using condoms or any kind of protection, yeah. why did I get pregnant? So are you saying you don't believe Mr. Brooks can even father a child? I don't think so, no. After this, Mr. McDonald was brought in and the judge asked him some questions and he said that he believed Mr. Brooks was his father. He also revealed that another man reached out to him and claimed his paternity. Upon this, judge again asked the defendant of her denial and she gave this reason. He ain't done nothing. You don't never case. spend no time with him. I live in Texas and I, I spend more time with this boy and talk to him more than you do. I work. Do you don't you? work, you ain't never had a job. The young boy was sitting in the court with the hope of finding his real father today. All three lives were hanging on a thread for so long, but it was time to read the results to settle things once and for all. All right! This is my boy. <laughs> <laughs>
Young and stupid love life always haunts you back with your mistakes. In this case, Miss Salva wanted to prove the paternity of her daughter and wanted Mr. Gonzalez to be in the baby's life. On the other hand, he not only denied it, but believed that the plaintiff was very promiscuous and claimed that she slept with his best friend, the plaintiff. Miss Salvo, you claim that around the time you conceived your one-year-old daughter, Amaya, you carried on a sexual relationship with the defendant, Mr. Gonzalez. Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Gonzalez, you state you're also hoping Amaya is your daughter. Yes, Your Honor. Said he refused to take care of their daughter and claimed that she only slept with Mr. Gonzalez once and shared her interest in black and Hispanic men. It was bold to reveal. Then the judge asked the defendant about their relationship. They was Mr. The, Gonzalez, the worst you've only had sex with Miss Salvo one time? No, Your Honor. It was more than six times. One thing led to another. We started kissing. We started touching on each other. We went to the room. We had sex. I was Did thirsty. Did you use protection? No, ma'am. When I opened the fridge, I was naked. Her mom saw me. Her mom was like, wow. You were naked in her kitchen and she said, wow. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> That's a wild moment, but in your mom's house. After his statement, the plaintiff claimed that he lied about the number and admitted that she also was sleeping with her ex-boyfriend around the same time. Baby mama also shared that her daughter didn't resemble the ex, but with the defendant, and she proved it. So you believe this is the reason why she's ultimately his biological child? Yes, ma'am. If I had a picture of my ex, my current ex-boyfriend's -boy kids, they have no type of resemblance. She doesn't look, she looks nothing. Did you test your ex at all? I did test them. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay, and what happened? He is not the father. If the possibility had got cleared, then why was Mr. Gonzalez still in doubt? Well, it was just one fragment of the case, but the judge asked the defendant more about the doubts, and he didn't stop, but had something else to entertain us. I took my best friend over there to her house. Five days later, he tells me, I'm sorry, Julio, but I gotta show you something. I'm like, what you mean you gotta show me something? He showed me naked pictures of Ashley like this. Oh. Really? Yes, ma'am. So Definitely. Mr. Gonzalez, was your friend claiming he, he had had a sexual relationship friend. with Miss Salvo? Yes, Your Honor. It's freaky embarrassing to find this out from your friend. Hearing the story, the plaintiff quickly denied it and called him delusional. Judge again asked about his doubts, and he shared the sneaky actions of Miss Salvo. She Why did you up, feel like you were getting played? she went to meet up with a guy. And you know that for a fact? Yes, ma'am. How do you know that for a fact? Because um, it came out it, it came out that night. Um, Her mom and, and the guy, they, they told me, he told me that he dropped her off in the motorcycle at the mall. Then the plaintiff defended herself, saying she didn't want to ruin her friendship with him and shared that her ex had helped her financially during pregnancy. Miss Salvo further said she acted dumb at that age, and the defendant brought another doubted moment. Like, he, like he want to fight me or something? Yo, I was actually, why that guy so mad at me? Why he, he looked like he want to fight me? Oh, because he wanted to be the baby daddy, but I tell him, you're, you're the baby daddy. Your Honor, he was, that boy has been obsessed with me since elementary school. I've been with him since elementary school. He said he wanted a kid You've by You've been with me. him since elementary No, not with, no. <laughs> okay. No, 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 no. He was just a friend, but nothing sexual has ever occurred. It feels like she is not lying about that psycho. What do you think? After this, the judge asked the plaintiff about raising the kid, and she shared that her fiancé had been helping her, and the defendant cut her off and bragged about his responsibilities. Excuse me, Your Honor. When that baby was born, got her um, formula, diapers, um, baby, um, baby carrier, um, crate, everything. Now, I don't even think that, I think they found it on the corner of the road. I don't think she purchased it. I'm not quite sure. My fiance is one who keeps buying her diapers. I don't never return anything from my daughter because one, I struggle enough as it is. Didn't need to know much after crib or cradle confusion, but still, she exposed him there. After the plaintiff's statement, the judge brought in her fiance, the real dad, to ask him about the baby's duties. I want Amaya to be my daughter. You do? Yeah. I don't want her, she, it's not her fault she's here in this world. She used to eat in my house. She used to, my mom used to get her stuff. My mom would feed her. My mom would get her everything. One day, because my mom didn't want to pay her phone bill, she started um, talking junk to my mom. After lots of freaky and accusing statements, the judge was ready to call for results to reveal the paternity of the innocent baby. Moreover, she was relieved that both men on the podium will give their love to the baby, so the DNA test was read. You are not the father. <laughs> Excuse me, Your Honor. Can I still come around and see Amaya and help her out if I can? Because for a year and four or five months, she's been my daughter and she's still gonna be my daughter. He's asking if he could possibly remain in her life. Please. Yeah. A disturbing marriage along with paternity doubts appeared in the court to find the identity of their son. The plaintiff shared that his wife admitted another possibility after three years of their baby's birth, and the defendant claimed that Mr. Pickett had also cheated with eight women. Mr. Pickett, 
You claim that when your son turned three, the defendant, your wife, admitted to you that you may not be his biological father. Now, Miss Pickett, you admit to stepping out on your husband and cheating around the time that you conceived your son, Patrick. Before the plaintiff said that after his vacation, he kept seeing the same guy around his wife's place a couple of times, and then she told him about the pregnancy. Upon confronting him, she denied it. Next, he talked about his other trip in detail. Her friend was dating my friend. He told me that the other guy that was there was for Shanae. I'm asking her, is these my kids? Is this my son? Have you been cheating? You know, I, I love you. I quit cheating. And you can ask the girls, they'd be like, man, I, I, I'm going home. Then the plaintiff explained that he wanted to play his daddy duties, but suspicion stopped him, and the defendant agreed that she did him wrong by cheating, and Mr. Pickett cut her off, saying that his son's early birth created doubt. E it, it is eating me up, and I'm not upset about it. It's like, it's, it, it's, it's caused because of me. I took all the blame. They said, if you're a real man, you will take the blame of your family being in any kind of disaster or anything like that. So the wife admitted her mistake, but he still didn't believe her. But this lunatic man has all the talent in himself to tell his story. Then the plaintiff set the stage to explain how things went when she confronted him about her cheating. This is my That's exact, how you did it? I did just like this. And I was in short pants, we were supposed to go swimming, and I just lost the whole swimming mode. I was like, <sighs> His son, his father, his his son. Because when I'm old and I need him, he'll be there for me. You know what right. I mean? I, I I had him doing that. Everything, baseball, I had him doing all that That's stuff. That's good! Then the plaintiff continued expressing his love for his son, and the judge asked Mrs. Pickett's feelings, and she shared her regretful thoughts, but he cut her off saying that they still got back together. For further details about their case, the judge asked the defendant's witness to speak. First of all, Brandon never forgave her for anything she done. He loves his kids dearly. He wants to be with them all the time. He has them now, but he's never forgiven her. He's never given her a chance for anything. You're saying he's controlling. He's very controlling. He's very intimidating. But so, are you still controlling no, her I don't from control, afar? No, I don't control a thing. I can. Does I, he control you, Miss Pickett? Uh, in a way, I still feel controlled. How? If you don't live with me. A man obsessed with kids, this much would surely be controlling. After the defendant shared the fear that he also doubted the baby she was carrying in her belly, the judge took over it and asked the plaintiff's comments on this one. Are you still cheating with other women? Yes. There ain't no cheating. If you separated, there's no cheating. If we're not in agreement that we want to be lovers and friends and you want to let your sister is talking more than you control your life, then I have to find somebody else that's going to love me. Then the judge asked about her hopes and she shared that she wanted a divorce and was tired of the doubts in the relationship. She made the right decision for her life. But the judge asked about his thoughts and he again started his melodrama. I but done wrong. I, I really her. love her though. Like it's dudes her. that be like, I love you, I love you. I, I, I know I cheated. I really love her like can you imagine that she also has thoughts in the back of her I, mind? She got more than me. She got vision. So my thing is this. After listening to both of them, the judge knew that there was still some hope to save this marriage, even after all those doubts. What do you think about their future after the DNA outcome? Let's see the results. Mr. Pickett, you are his father. Oh, yeah. Well, I got something for you. Hold on.